Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl funny lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the, the link in the comment section below, and we'll do it for you. We've got a second YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse 2.0. Hit there, subscribe, and enjoy the content that we put out. We've got a podcast called Diving In with Fanny and Jesse, and we have some amazing conversations which you guys don't want to miss. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, this channel, or our second YouTube channel for the visual. A big shout out to the person that suggested this, and a big shout out to the people that keep on subscribing. Thank you very much. Thank you for liking, commenting, sharing, and thank you for those that will subscribe after this. We appreciate each one of you guys. So thank you very much. I hope you guys are doing all right, and may he stay blessed. So today I'm going to be reacting to Don't Ever Forget This. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Assalamu alaikum guys, and welcome to a very important concerning and there's a lot of lessons to be learned. <laughs> Let's jump straight into this one, yeah? A long-awaited report says there is credible evidence that Australian elite soldiers unlawfully killed 39 people during the Afghan war. A young man is captured. He seems to be unarmed. Do you want me to kill him? The soldier shouts at his commander. The prisoner is dead. Nor was this a one-off. Soldiers sent to liberate the accused instead of cold-blooded murder. But what's even more concerning is, why on earth is the BBC not using the word terrorist here? I mean, if there's any situation to which this term is more applicable to, it's this situation right here. Well, it seems that either they've uh, conveniently opted not to mention it, or they've got selective amnesia, or the fact that they're biased towards Muslims, and it's just becoming more and more evident now. But let's add another worry on top of this, yeah? And that is the fact that the BBC is taxpayer funded, yeah? In other words, they are not supposed to be biased in their reporting, yeah? Even though when Corbyn was running for Prime Minister, their bias was exposed for the whole world to see, frankly. And being a taxpayer, if I had a choice, I would rather give my money to a hobo who still has cocaine residue on his top lip. And no, I'm not talking about Dominic Cummings. <laughs> Even though it looks like he fits that criteria really well. Say what? And there's a little interview segment that comes to mind of Denzel. If you don't read the newspaper, you're uninformed. If you do read it, you're misinformed. To the people of Afghanistan, on behalf of the Australian Defence Force, I sincerely and unreservedly apologise. If you stick a knife in my back nine inches and pull it out six inches, there's no progress. Mm -hmm. If you pull it all the way out, that's not progress. The progress is healing the wound that the blow, that the blow made. Whoa! You guys are witnessing something special right here, frankly. Forget your Harry Potters and your Experiamus and Avada Curve flipping davras here indeed you have the apology and this apology is special yes it's gonna bring the dead to life i don't think you have the facilities for that big man surely these words can reverse an entire decade of islamophobia don't forget the New Zealand shooter was actually from Australia. Yes. This man told us about the day his brother was allegedly killed by Australian troops. We were fishing and having a picnic. Around noon, the foreigners carried out their raid. They arrested my brother and took him to a corner. A few minutes later, they shot him in the head three times. It has been killings like this that have created terrorists and that Muslims have been saying for the last I'd, I'd say last couple of decades, but any time we mention foreign policy, nah, nah, nah. We have totally destabilized the Middle East. It's a disaster. 
Okay, okay, okay. Let's not get political, yeah? Let's just look at our culture. Movie culture, yeah? Everyone's familiar with movie culture. The movie Taken, yeah? In which his daughter got kidnapped and he spent the rest of his life tracking down the gang and when he did, pow, 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 he shot them all dead. You had law-abiding citizen in which his family got killed in front of him and then the law didn't do him justice, frankly, yeah? I saw their faces. I, I saw them do it. I mean, <laughs> kill my little girl, man. You blacked out, Glide. Your testimony won't be reliable. You get on the stand and the defense will tear you apart. So the guy took the law into his own hands and went on a killing spree to get justice himself. You think your wife and daughter would feel good about you killing in their name? My wife and daughter can't feel anything. They're dead. Release me and drop all charges by 6 a.m. Or what? Or I kill everyone. And let's not forget John Wick, yeah? <laughs> In which his dog dies and the guy goes out and kills 77 people in revenge. It was just a f***ing car, just a f***ing dog. Just a dog. And you've got other movies like The Punisher and you've got child-friendly movies, yeah? Like Spider-Man and Dark Knight, yeah? Where even those superheroes, they go towards evil because a family member dies, yeah? In Spider-Man, his uncle and in Batman, well, his mother and his father. Allegations include junior soldiers being coerced into executing prisoners to get their first kill in a practice known as blooding and that weapons were planted on victims to make it look like the killings were legitimate. But it seems in the Middle East, loads of John Wicks and Punishers have been created thanks to Australia and the UK. There's been an inquiry here, but no one will face prosecution. We lost this war and one of the reasons for that is that the message we were giving to Afghan people, which is we're here to protect you, was being totally undermined by people who would raid houses in the middle of the night and murder people who were not involved in any form of terrorism or insurgent activity. But in the Middle East, they're not allowed to be angry and do terrible things because of emotional anger, frustration and trauma. They expected to sit down, shut up and not have the basic emotion of anger. But if that's not all, they're having to deal with crappy straw man arguments that are pointing fingers towards their religion and they're being told to reform it. The only thing that needs to be reformed, frankly, is the foreign policy and the crappy law. Because apparently I just killed two people and you were about to let me walk right out that door. I feed you a couple of bullshit legal precedents and there you go, you jump on it like a f***ing eat. A special investigator will now be appointed to look at the findings, gather evidence and then present it to the public prosecutor. It's a process that could take years. And even these four years aren't a guarantee that these people are going to get justice. Imagine getting robbed and waiting four years for the police to arrive. Who on this planet is going to say yes? That's a very good law system that you've got right there. In that time I'd probably be married, have two kids and be on the verge of divorce because my wife says I stand around waiting for the police all the time. To some degree there is a bit of progress with Australia yeah? At least they have acknowledged the mistake and they're doing something. Unlike the UK who think their law is some sort of Wikipedia article. The UK government is changing the law to make it harder to prosecute soldiers for alleged war crimes. What a joke that our system is and what our governments are doing frankly. But I guess the bare minimum that we can do is educate ourselves from instances like this and the next time our religion is blamed, mate, I want you guys to see right through the bull crap. I would say pardon my French but I mean Macron is frankly swimming in bull crap so <laughs> let's leave it at that guys yeah. Look after yourselves until next time. Assalamu alaikum. This is a very very um, interesting video. I really like people that quite sped and sped. How are you going to
coerce people into doing something wrong and you take pleasure from that and you're fine with that don't you people have hearts it really doesn't make sense why plant evidence on someone so that they get ex executed then what do you gain from that there's many things that go on that people need to open their eye to their eyes to it's really up to us to see the good and the bad in situations don't just sit and take everything that comes your way they're calling these people bad people yet they're forgetting they're sponsoring these people or they're making these people angry your cousin is gunned down you're going to want to take revenge to some extent for those that have uh, the guts to take revenge stand up and say uh-uh this is not right and the media is going to portray that as something else just like once a black man kills one person it's going to be called terrorism but when a white person does it they've got mental issues which doesn't make sense don't other people also get to be tested for the mental issues thingy it's just a crazy world out of there out there i mean so so yeah let me know what you think what are your contributions make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video